Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the 2020 Virtual Variety Show. I'm Owen Thomas. I'm Josh Hahn. And we will be your MCs for tonight's variety show. We will be showcasing a variety of talents from our 8th to 12th grade students. Opening up the show is my good buddy Josh Hahn singing a beautiful solo. Just kidding, I'll save your eardrums. Opening up the show is Elena Mulder singing Many a New Day from the lovely musical Oklahoma. Should a woman who is healthy and strong love her like a baby when her man goes away? A weeping and a wailing, how he done her wrong. That's one thing you'll never hear me say. Never gonna think that the man I lose is the only man among men. I'll snap my fingers to show I don't care. I'll buy me a brand new dress to Great job, Elena. Next up we have Liv Starbrough singing Feelings Are Fatal by MXM Tune.
Great job, Liv. Up next, we have Elena Repke singing Hostage by Billie Eilish. I want to be alone Alone with you, does that make sense? I want to steal your soul And hide you in my treasure chest I don't know what to do to do with your kiss on my neck I don't know what feels true but this feels right so stay a sec yeah you feel right so stay a sec and let me crawl inside your veil build a wall give you a ball and chain it's not like me to be so mean you're all I wanted just let me hold you like a hostage against my cheek gold leaf across your lips kiss me until I can't speak gold chain beneath your shirt the shirt that you let me wear home Fake and real love hurts But nothing hurts when I'm alone When you're with me and we're alone Just let me crawl inside your veins I'll build a wall I'll give you a ball and chain So mean you're all I wanted Just let me hold you Hold you Like a hostage Like a hostage Thank you, Elena. Next, we're gonna change things up a little bit and have Elijah Switzer perform his expository address from individual contest speech. Expository address, that's a big word. What exactly does it mean, Josh? Expository address is an informative speech using visual aids. His performance earned him all state honors in contest speech this year. Here is Elijah with competitive eating. I want everybody to close their eyes for a second and imagine something with me. I want you to, to imagine eating eight hot dogs in one minute. After about the third hot dog, it sounds pretty gross, doesn't it? Now I want you to imagine doing that for 10 minutes straight. That is actually what Joey Chestnut did last year at the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest on the 4th of July. Now, if you're curious who Joey Chestnut is, I'll give you a quick recap. He is the greatest competitive eater to ever walk this planet. And I'm going to share some of my favorite records of his to you. 81 Eggo Waffles in 8 minutes, 
74 Nathan's hot dogs with buns in 10 minutes, and most disgustingly, 141 hard-boiled eggs in 10 minutes. Hmm. Now, if you're also curious about the Nathan's hot dog, Nathan's hot dog eating contest, the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest has been around for about 10 years, but Nathan's Hot Dogs have been around since 1916. Now, the Nathan's Hot Dog, contest, Nathan's hot dog Eating Contest has a $10,000 prize for the winner. Now, I know everybody here is thinking, I want that cash, so I'm going to help you out. To qualify for the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest, you got to eat a lot of hot dogs. I know we've all seen this hot dog rack at like a quick start or a gas station, and sometimes we grab one. But at the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest, to qualify, you gotta grab all of them. This hot dog rack can hold about 20 hot dogs. You need to eat 20 hot dogs with buns to qualify for the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. Qualify as in, you gotta do it again. But $10,000 is $10,000. Step one to become a great competitive eater is your masseter muscle. If you bite down, you can feel it flex right here. The masseter muscle is the cornerstone for competitive eating. The faster you can bite and the stronger you can bite, the more food you can eat. The way to train this muscle is to chew on a lot of gum or eat a well done steak. Both get the job done. And if you're curious about how strong Joey Chestnut's bite force is, this is a German Shepherd. They have a bite force of around 400 pounds of pressure. And I know that's hard to calculate, but Joey Chestnut's bite is stronger than that. So if you're ever getting your arm ripped off by a German Shepherd, you can think, hey, at least it's not Joey Chestnut. Now, the second step is jumping. When you use gravity and you bounce up and down, the food can go down faster with the force of gravity helping you out. Now, the best way to work on this is maybe some calf raises or some squats, anything to really get the legs moving. The next step is called thoracic pressure, and it's getting kind of sciencey now, but it's easy to explain. If you hold your nose and pop your ears, your throat actually opens up. When your throat opens up, you can eat a lot more hot dogs or whatever kind of food that you're eating. The best way to work on this is, since coronavirus is coming around, you can buy some really cheap plane tickets to Miami, maybe, and you can pop your ears all the way, all the, the whole time you're on your trip there. Now, in competition, this is probably the biggest part of it, water intake. If you don't drink enough water, you'll be chewing too much. But if you drink too much water, you're gonna fill up on water and you won't be able to eat hot dogs or whatever food you're eating. There's a sweet spot between a quarter gallon and a half gallon that you need to hit, and you need to know your sweet spot before you even begin competitive eating. Now, this is also one of the bigger parts of competitive eating, and it really has nothing to do with eating. It's meditation. After about the 20th hot dog, your brain shuts down, and the last thing you wanna do is keep eating. But you gotta keep eating, because you need that $10,000. And you just need to go mind over matter and continue eating, even though it's the last thing that you want to do. Now, outside of the competitive eating realm, I just want to say that we should all, on the 4th of July, watch uh, Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest, if they have it this year, because competitive eaters really deserve it. It takes a lot of strength, mostly mental strength, but physical strength, to be able to eat that much. And I believe that whatever kind of popularity they get, they definitely deserve. As you can see here, Matt Stoney, the number two competitive eater in the world, has a YouTube channel. And this is him eating 15 packets of really spicy ramen. Now, this is Nike, one of the richest companies in the world, making a football video, not the pigskin football that Americans like, the soccer football. And he almost has half of the views, which sounds bad on paper, but it's astonishing to think that some guy who can eat a lot can get this many views while some person behind a million dollar corporation or a billion dollar corporation can only get that many views. And he actually has more likes. So whatever kind of popularity 
that competitive eaters can get, I feel like they deserve because it is probably one of the most intense, frustrating, and hardest sports out there. So, to leave you with this, if you're ever in a hide-and-seek match with Joey Chestnut, which I know is very odd, but just letting you know, out of eyes, not hiding behind, a wall of 81 Eggo waffles, or 74 Nathan's hot dogs with buns, or most disgustingly, 141 hard-boiled eggs. Thank you. Well, that was certainly disgusting. You know, as a self-proclaimed sports analyst, forget Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, or Babe Ruth, I'm now convinced Joey Chestnut is the GOAT of all sports. I agree. Thanks, Elijah. Next up is eighth grader Jonathan Ward singing Elton John's Crocodile Rock. Great job, Jonathan. Next up, we'll slow it down a little with Macy Freund singing Vienna by the great Billy Joel. So down, you crazy child. 
you're so ambitious for juvenile But then if you're so smart, tell me why are you still so afraid? to do in only so many hours in a day hey. but you know that when the truth is told that you can get what you want or you can just get old you're gonna kick off before you even get halfway through Ooh. when will you realize the end away Thank you, Macy. Next up, we have Lauren Carney taking on the Adele Classic, When We Were Young. Bro, I remember when I was young, I Dude. put rock all the way on my... Nobody cares. Take it away, Lauren. Just like a 
Great job, Lauren. Changing things up again, we have the great Michael Prusner giving us an after-dinner speech, which is a humorous and informative speech aimed at a certain group of people. Michael's speech today is titled, How to Cure Social Awkwardness. Bro, forget social awkwardness. I'm trying to figure out how to cure social distancing. Would you stick to the strip? Okay, take it away, Michael. I got my notepad ready. Hello, everyone. My name is Michael, and today I'd like to talk about an issue that is very important to me being socially awkward. And I know that this itch issue affects each and every one of us. So today, i like to offer three important tips on how to get over this crippling issue. Tip number one is learning how to talk. Tip number two is having friends to talk to. And tip number three is not caring what other people think. Let's start with tip number one, learning how to talk. While this might seem very easy, it's actually not. You need to control how much you say. You don't want to talk too much, or otherwise people will hate you and ignore you. And you don't want to talk too little, because you don't want people to question if you have the ability to speak. Both of these things will affect you negatively, so you need to find that perfect middle ground. You also have to control what you say, because you don't want to say random things all the time, otherwise people will think you're weird, and they won't like you, and that won't help with the issue of being socially awkward. This brings us into the next tip of having friends. If you have friends, they give you the ability to practice how to speak. Obviously, you can still be yourself and have your sense of humor, but they will help you with the general, uh, you know, help you with the idea of talking and get you more comfortable. And this will help you in the future immensely. And that brings us into tip number three, not caring what people think. Now, this is a big part of being socially awkward because for the most part, you always feel very insecure and like you're in the wrong. However, usually, that's not the case. So if you stop caring about other people's opinions, this will help you grow more confident and so on. So now that you've heard all these tips, let me talk about what will happen if you choose to ignore my advice. 
you will never have friends, and you'll probably never get married, and as a result, you'll never have kids, and as an added result, you'll probably die alone, and no one will miss you. So now that you've heard all of this, have fun socializing. Very informative, Michael. Read these notes. I'm still trying to figure out how to read the script. Well, anyway, next we'll hear from Isabel Sessler. She will be performing Beyonce's Halo. Oh, like the video game? No, the song. Nicely done, Isabel. 
Coming up, we have one of our seniors, Zach Self, performing his solo musical theater piece from individual contest speech titled, That's All. Oh, sick. We're done already? No, get back here. <sighs> okay, Zach, go ahead. What do I want in a woman? Platinum hair and smart and funny Disposition sweet and sunny Goes to yoga, comes from money That's all 28, looks 17 And 5 foot 10 and tan and lean And loves to cook and camp and clean That's all Dances like an angel Never makes me dance Catches eyes of others But gives no one else a glance Brilliant, unassuming, independent Crochet hats and loves to ski I tell ya, that's my list, it's etched in stone, the perfect, perfect girl for me. She doesn't have to be a supermodel. A regular model's fine. The lady who will turn me on will smell just like a Cinnabon, grows older just like Goldie Hawn, that's all. The girl with whom I'll never break up doesn't need a stitch of makeup, all she has to do is wake up, that's all. Raucously soft-spoken, amiably wild, slightly Julietish, Julia Roberts, Julia Child, Stokey loving, poker playing, Betty Crocker, Muse Supers, me tea. I tell ya, that's my list, I'm pretty sure, the perfect, perfect girl for me. I'm not saying that this list is ironclad, to get most of what I want would not be bad. I would willingly give up a point, you bet. She could be brunette, redhead or brunette. A girl with any color hair who actually wants me there and walks and talks and breathes the air. That's all. Who puts up with the games I play and all the stupid things I say and somehow loves me anyway. That's all. Comfortably exciting, passionate and true. Every other Sunday lets me watch a game or two, but mostly walks into a room and boom, her smile is everything I see. And if she'd let me keep my car from college, tolerate my friends and like to play a little pinball, not make fun of, never mind. And if you maybe have her number, tell her any night this week, I'm free. Every single night. Next week's looking good. The whole month is wide open. Way to go, Zach. Next, we'll be hearing from Tessa Stroh singing Don't Watch Me Cry by Georgia Smith. Oh, it hurts the most because I don't know the cause. Maybe I shouldn't have cried when you left and told me not to wait. Oh, it kills the most to say that I still care Now I'm left trying to rewind the times you held and kissed me back I wonder if you're thinking is she alright all alone I wonder if you tried to call but couldn't find your phone Have I ever crossed your thoughts? Because your name's all over mine A moment in time, don't watch me cry A moment in time, don't watch me cry I'm not crying cause you left me on my own I'm not crying cause you left me with no warning I'm just crying cause I can't escape what could have been It's harder when you can't see through their thoughts Not that I want to get in But I want to see how your mind works No, oh, it's harder when they don't know what they've done Thinking it's better they leave me in that I'll have to move on No, oh, I wonder if you're thinking Couldn't find your f Have I ever 
across your thoughts because your name's all over mine a moment in time don't watch me cry a moment in time don't watch me cry i'm not crying cause you left me on my own i'm not crying cause you left me with no warning i'm just crying cause i can't escape what could have been are you aware when you set me free all i can do is let my heart bleed Next up with another speech performance, we have Dannon Oberhauser performing his Allstate awarded interpretive prose. Prose focuses on how the performer interprets and delivers their piece. Here's Gannon with, oh Romeo, oh like wow. Does Shakespeare appeal to the youth in the United States? Well, like sort of. This is, oh Romeo, oh like wow by Mike Harden. This is a really super sad play about this dude, Romeo, and this chick, Juliet. They had names like that because it was like the real old days before TikTok and Instagram. So no one had cool names like Rachel or Camden or Katie. They all had really geeky names like Benvolio and Tibble and Mercutio. Anyway, these two families, the Montagues and Capulets, really hate each other. I mean, they can't even walk down the street without thrashing on each other. Because, like, that's what happens right at the beginning. This dude, Samson, who works for Old Man Capulet, he sees this other guy, Abraham, who hangs with Montague, and he bites his thumb. I mean, Samson bites his own thumb, not Abraham's thumb, which, in the olden days, was kind of like saying, Yo, mama! With, and Abraham says, Are you dissing me? So they start beating down. But it gets broken up before any, anyone gets real messed up. And the prince, he's like the principal of this whole town. He says, yo, next time you people get in each other's face, I'm going to twist someone's head around so their cap's on straight. But then Juliet's old man decides he's going to have this party. But he has to send this servant out to tell everybody because they didn't even have phones back then. But this servant is like dyslexic or something, and he can't make out the names on the list. So he stops someone to help him read it. And duh. It's Romeo. So Romeo looks at the list, and there are all these names of these freaks and jocks and stoners. But then he sees Rosaline's name. She's this chick he thinks is super hot. So he decides to crash the party, which is like easy, because it's a masquerade party. Meanwhile, Juliet's mom, she's trying to fix Juliet up with this guy named Paris. <laughs> is that a dorky name or what? Anyway. Romeo goes to the party, even though he's totally bummed, because he loves Rosaline, but he doesn't think she likes him back. So Romeo gets to the party and starts checking out the girls. He sees Juliet and goes, Whoa, who's that babe? And she goes, Wow, who's that hunk? Which is bad, see? Because Shakespeare already said they got fatal loins, whatever that means, and they're star-crossed which means both of them are Aquarians, I think. But that doesn't stop them. So Romeo starts hitting on her, and they hold hands for a while, and then he goes, oh then dear saint, let lips do what hands do. And he kisses her, and it's like super cool. But then Juliet's nurse pulls her away, cause like in the old days, they really had a cow if they caught you sucking face. After that, it's curfew or something, cause Everybody has to leave. But when Romeo's heading for his pad, he says, check it out, dudes, I'm going to bail, and jumps over this big fence into Juliet's yard. He's like creeping in the trees, and he looks up at Juliet's bedroom and goes, who left that light on? Or something like that. And then she goes, oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? And she's like totally being stupid or blind or whatever, because he's like totally there. But then Romeo is like, what's up? And then she's like, oh my gosh. So then he's like, let's get married. And then she's like, okay. So then they go see this friar dude. He must work at McDonald's or something, because otherwise they wouldn't call him a friar. 
Anyway, he's like, I don't know, guys. Your parents would, like, totally kill me. But then he thinks about it, and he's like, yeah, okay, because it could help their family stop hating on each other. But then Juliet's cousin Tybalt comes, and he's, like, totally being stupid because Romeo's just trying to show him some love. But Tybalt didn't know what the heck he was talking about, so he stabbed Mercutio, and he fell and died. And then Romeo's like, no, you killed my cousin. But like, now that him and Juliet are married, Tybalt is his cousin. And then Romeo's like, I'll kill you. So then he stabs Tybalt and he dies, which is really stupid because Romeo's gonna be banished or whatever because he's too much of a gangster now. So then Romeo and Juliet become really emo and suicidal. And Juliet has to marry this guy that's like made of wax. But like, who'd wanna marry a wax dummy, right? So Juliet's like, nah man, I wanna die. But the friar's like, whoa, chill out lady. I'll give you this thing and you'll totally look like you're dead and you'll be buried and Romeo will come. So Romeo's still emo cause he doesn't know what the heck is going on. So then he goes and buys some poison so he can kill himself and fall on Juliet cause he wants to die with her. But then Paris comes and he thinks Romeo's trying to be a gangster again. So he draws a sword and tries to kill Romeo but Romeo's like, nah, man. So he kills Paris and then kills himself on Juliet. And then Juliet wakes up and she's like, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Because in the olden days, people had to repeat things a lot because no one knew what they were saying. So she's like, oh, happy dagger. Because the dagger had a smiley face on it or something. And then she kills herself. And then... Everyone did not live happily ever after, except for Mr. and Mrs. Capulet and Mr. Montague, or Lord Montague, or maybe Dude Montague. I don't know. Whatever floats your boat. Oh, like, wow, Dannon, that was great. Coming up, we have another performance from Elena Mulder singing House on a Hill by Bethel Music. Yeah. 
Thanks, Selena. Next up, we have a duet. Macy Freund and Nathan Clausen will be singing my personal favorite, Someone You Loved, by Louis Capaldi. was pretty good, but I think we could do better. Dude, I know we could do better. I don't even need a warm-up. It's easy to say, but it's never the same. I guess I kind of like the way you love me, babe. 
now the day bleeds into nightfall and you're not here to get me through it all what the heck kelly you weren't actually supposed to put that in there well now we're gonna get bullied but anyway closing out tonight's show is shayla barrett with the song Fighting For Me by Riley Clement. I need the kind of love that can outlast the night. I need the kind of love that is willing to fight when the going gets tough and I see you showing up like never before This battle for my heart You took on from the start You are the peace when my mind's a war And oh, you will never stop fighting for me When I can't fight for myself Every word is promise you keep You stand up for me in the darkest night When my faith is weak, you're still by my side You will never stop fighting for me Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah In the perfect timing, you make all things right Ooh, you paint a silver lining in this heart Thank you for tuning in to watch our AP students show off their talents tonight. I'd also like to uh, thank Kelly for his... Um, per, per, per Dude, his... I thought you had Michael's notes still. Oh, shoot. But anyway, we would like to thank Kelly, even though he publicly humiliated both of us, but it's all right. Anyway, everybody stay safe and have a great night. Thanks for tuning in.